Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I was asked, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and install Plasma on Linux Mint. Why? Well, Linux Mint is awesome. Plasma is, eh, pretty good. It's starting to lose favor with me, but it is still a good desktop environment. Well, let's go ahead and uh, give it its proper due. And uh, I was asked when we did the Linux Mint budgie, hey, can you still do the same thing with Plasma? You used to have to install Ubuntu backports and a bunch of other things. It was kind of a little bit annoying, but hey, you know what? It's actually not annoying anymore. It's just as simply easy as installing the Plasma desktop on Linux Mint. I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Now we're gonna use GNOME boxes this time. I'm having an issue with VirtualBox recently where it seems to get stuck updating packages and I have no earthly idea why and I can't find much information about it and I'm just like you know what maybe it's just time to start using some different software so I'm testing out GNOME boxes we'll see how that works and I'll have a video about GNOME boxes down the road uh, we'll see. Now let's go ahead and get into reinstalling Plasma on Linux Mint. You do have three options. Your first option is a full, it's about a gigabyte download. It's going to be called KDE-Full and this will install the desktop and most KDE applications and every dependency of KDE has. So this is like system bloat, pure, full-fledged, KDE uh, addiction. Go ahead and do that if you'd like to uh, have everything Plasma on your platform. The second is KDE-Standard-Desktop. Excuse me, KDE-Standard, excuse me. And this will give you your desktop and your basic default apps that are going to come with any basic KDE install configured, ready to go. It's not going to have all of your dependencies, but it will certainly have some. And then the lowest level, the one I am installing on this video is called KDE-Plasma-Desktop. This installs just the desktop and the basic tools. We're going to get Discover. We're going to get Dolphin. We're going to get just a few other K applications, but it's not overly bloated, nor does it install every bit of the KDE uh, dependencies. And so if you need to install extra applications, don't be surprised if it takes a little bit longer down the road because we're not actually installing everything. So before we jump into this, let me give you a little bit of a caveat. KDE is based on Qt, whereas Cinnamon is based on GDK. And so that being said, I have had some issues where I'm running Cinnamon and Plasma on one uh, on one operating system because if you do some things of the theme configuration changes in Plasma, they might bleed over into Cinnamon and cause some theming issues. That is one of the few cases where I have noted some of these conflicts. So I would recommend if you're going to be installing Plasma on top of Linux Mint Cinnamon, then it's probably you're not going to have a perfect experience hot swapping between the two desktop environments. So I would really only do this if you, you're you like eh, ambivalent towards Cinnamon, you don't really want to log into it, you really want to use Plasma, hey, go ahead, log in, do all your configurations with Plasma, and understand if you have to go back into Cinnamon, you might find some theming anomalies going on. That's okay. Uh, it's just something to be aware of. So don't think that installing Plasma based on Qt is going to be a perfectly um, uh, in unity with installing Cinnamon based on GTK. But if that is still what you'd like to do, then let's go ahead and jump on over into the box. Now, I prepped my box by installing Linux Mint Cinnamon with the latest edition, and I ran all system updates. So we started with a completely updated system, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about just simply installing it and see what it gets us. So once we land on the Linux Mint desktop, just make sure all your updates are done. And I already did updates in this system, so uh, we can see everything is done. I've already done that. Now, there are a few options that you have for installing this. We want to do sudo apt install. And if you do kde-full, this is going to be about a gigabyte of data downloaded. It pretty much contains the desktop, most applications, and all dependencies. The other one is the KDE standard. And KDE standard is going to be a little bit smaller. It's going to give you the desktop, the basic default apps, and some of the other uh, dependencies and such. Or if you just want the desktop, do KDE Plasma Desktop. 
And this is going to be the smallest one. It's going to give you the desktop and the basic tools. Any other dependencies would need to be installed as you install extra KDE-based applications. So go ahead and enter this, enter your password, and then depending on your uh, timing, your internet connection, and how uh, intense the processor or the system is, this is going to take anywhere from, I don't know, maybe five minutes on really fast, good internet, high processing speed, down to maybe, uh, you know, half an hour or so. And so you can see here that uh, just the downloading, it looks like it's estimating about a minute and a half. So we're going to go ahead and let it uh, do all its thing here. And then I will come back as soon as this is done installing. So it's downloaded everything. And uh, this is something I forgot that when you install KDE, it's going to give you the option to run uh, different uh, display managers. This is basically your login screen. So we're going to go over here. We're going to hit your OK. and then. SDDM is what KDE uses as default. LightDM is what Linux Mint uses as default. It really doesn't matter uh, which one you pick. I personally like LightDM, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with LightDM. You can do either one. It's not going to cause a problem with getting into Plasma or any other desktop environment that you have on the system. So now that we've chosen that, now it's going to go ahead and uh, just start checking everything and installing the Plasma system. So this part here is going to take a little bit of time. So we'll be back. So we're coming up on the last step here. We're sitting at 99%. And as soon as it's done, what we're going to want to do is reboot the whole system. And now we are done. So I'm just going to go ahead and reboot from the terminal, just typing in reboot. And our virtual machine will reboot itself. So once we reboot the system, we'll land back on our login screen here. And then down here where is where you pull down your desktop environment. So here's your default cinnamon. Here's your cinnamon with software rendering. And here is our newly installed Plasma. We'll enter in our password. Go ahead and log in. And this will boot us into Plasma. Now, of all of the desktop environments, I think of the raw implementations, Plasma has one of the best overall looking themes. And uh, this is what we get. There's nothing else really installed with it. And uh, it is still Linux Mint. Here is your update manager. You can go ahead and uh, pull that up, do everything with it you want. And then down here, let's go ahead and have a look at which applications that it installed that are different from your basic uh, Linux Mint. And uh, if I should remember most of these, I think everything here looks good. I can't remember if Pix was installed, but it might have been. Internet uh, it did add the KDE Connect and KDE Connect SMS, which will allow you to link an Android smartphone. It gives us the Conqueror web browser and open on connected device via KDE Connect. And everything else there is standard with Linux Mint. Uh, this is all standard with Linux Mint. Office suites, that's all standard. So you can see it did not add a lot of system bloat into, into our uh, system here. We have Q5 settings configuration. Uh, I think that that is a new application. And then we have, of course, Discover and Dolphin were added. This is using Dolphin, one of my least favorite, uh, least favorite uh, file managers, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll forgive it for that since we're specifically installing the system it comes with. And I don't remember Emoji Selector being a Linux Mint tool, but who knows? It might be. KFind, KWrite. Uh, Kate is probably installed. No, it did not install Kate. Kate is a basic text uh, text editor. Uh, did not install Kate, but it did give us uh, KWrite text editor and KFind for finding folders and options. Those would be new options. And then this text editor is the one that is default with Linux Mint. And so we see here that we can uh, set this up and basically have Linux Mint running a Plasma uh, iteration as well. Let's go ahead and have a look at our uh, system settings um, just to see if there's anything in there that is out of the ordinary. And like I said, if there's, uh, we did do just the basic Plasma desktop without any of the extra applications. And so if anything is missing, you can easily install it. And uh, this is, of course, just Linux Mint simply installing KDE Plasma desktop. No backports or anything else was required. Here's 
breeze, breeze dark options. So it gives us all of our, our basic application styles. Everything else in here is exactly what we would expect. So if you do like Plasma and you like Linux Mint, you can easily install KDE Plasma Desktop. So there you have it, installing Linux Mint Plasma um, installing Plasma on Linux Mint, I should say, works out well. I have no doubt if you're going to be using this in a long term and not jumping back and forth between Cinnamon and Plasma, I think you're probably going to have a pretty good experience. I was pleased with how easy this works. And as I said, I only did the lowest level KDE Plasma desktop. You could have done the full modes if you want to do everything Plasma installed. That is okay as well. It's just going to take a little bit longer to install. But anyway, there you have it, Linux Mint very easily able to install the Plasma desktop. So even though they don't make it available as a uh, simple standalone download anymore, you can still do that if you'd like to. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and other desktops I should try with this in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.